Good day folks, Jordan here with another software overview video. Today we're looking at Ubuntu 16.10, Yakety Yak, released on the 13th of October 2016. Now this release is significant in the fact that it actually has an early version of Unity 8, which we will be taking a look at here pretty soon in this video, unfortunately in freehand crappy camera style because as so many of these things end up occurring, I have to do it with an actual computer, although for this time I can see why they want to have it on a real computer, but regardless. So there are a couple differences between 16.04 LTS and 16.10, one of which is the software center launches a little bit more quickly, and hopefully we can replicate that here, which as you can see it launched super quickly, but of course um, not a lot's on the software center when you have an old outdated release, all you really have is Firefox, and in fact I just got a message earlier saying that this distro is no longer supported, which I will see if I can get that message to come back up and see if we can tell me that I don't have any access to software updates anymore. Yeah, see, failed to download repository information, check your internet connection. When in fact, yeah, it just simply doesn't actually have the ability to download any updates. See, there it is. Software updates are no longer provided for Ubuntu 16.10. To stay secure, you should upgrade to 1804.1 long-term support. I will do that in a later video. So, thanks for the help there, Canonical. Much appreciated. In this release, there was support for paid apps, which is something that pretty much every OS has had for a while now, until, well, Ubuntu decided to play catch-up. I suppose there have been paid Linux apps before, like in the Enterprise, but... I guess not in the software center. I don't know about that and how to confirm that, but you know, paid apps were a thing in the software center, I guess. There's also support for installing command line interface only non-graphical user interface applications. I don't know why that wasn't in there before, but hey, they're in there now. There was also support for installing fonts and multimedia codecs, which is a nice touch. Uh, not in the same way like Windows, I suppose. You probably have to do it through the terminal, but hey, at least the support is there. It's nice to have. This release introduced or was running the Linux kernel 4.8 and there's also LibreOffice 5.2 GTK3 installed which we can go ahead and launch uh, the word processor here and take a look at that. So as you can see there is LibreOffice and we can go ahead and check this out and indeed it is version 5.2.2.2 very nice. Another interesting change was all of the GNOME applications in the system were updated to version 3.20, and some of them were updated to version 3.22. Now, I don't know which ones in particular fall under this, because I don't think they're going to tell me too much. Well, this one was 3.20, which makes sense, but I'm not sure if there's any other ones that were updated to, like, 3.22. I suppose we could check out the text editor here real quick, and let's see. Yep, this one says 3.22 on it. All right, sounds good. Another improvement was the support for what's known as PPAs, or Personal Package Archives and Repository Software. Basically, that means if you were to go into the terminal, for example, and say you had a computer with an NVIDIA graphics card and you wanted to install the NVIDIA graphics drivers from the terminal, essentially all you have to do is do like sudo add apt repository and then PPA colon graphics drivers and then put in your sudo password and then guess what boom there you go now you have access to this particular PPA of course it's not going to work on this particular distribution and I'm not going to install it because I don't have an NVIDIA graphics card but hey you know the option is there if you wanted to add that particular personal package archive I'm gonna go and break the command but it's still nice, it's still nice, still nice to see nonetheless. So hopefully that's a good enough example of a PPA. And to top off what's been different and well in the change log, System D, which I kind of sort of cryptically talked about previously, now handles user sessions as well as the previously implemented system sessions. So whatever that means, I guess it handles user sessions. Well, hoop de doo. So that's pretty cool. So before we go ahead and wrap up this video and obviously get into the demonstration, uh, well, the brief demonstration of Unity 8, 
Let's go ahead and check out Firefox real quick, since obviously it's not Firefox Quantum in this release. So as you can see, it has still that same Google Chrome-esque interface, the older one. We're running on Firefox 49. Not bad at all. Um, so that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and check out Unity 8. So this is Unity 8 running on my Dell Precision T3600 computer sitting down here on the floor. It is powered by an Intel Xeon E5 2670 CPU with 8 gigs of RAM and a Radeon R9 380 graphics card. So as you can see, I've installed Ubuntu 16.10 on this computer on a surrogate hard drive and got Unity 8 to work. I remember back in the day when I was trying to get Unity 8 to function, it was a bit of a pain. But now that I have some era-appropriate hardware and graphics that will actually run the desktop environment properly, we can check it out here instead of having a broken VM try to load it and be completely unsuccessful. So as you can see, the user interface is a little bit different. Well, in fact, a lot different comparative to what we were seeing in Unity 7 previously. So as you can see, there is a browser. And all these apps are specific to Unity 8. They have a completely different user interface and this is definitely an experimental UI because as you can tell um, this is meant for testing and there's not a lot going on here I imagine you would have to install a bunch of different applications inside of unity 7 and then have them compatible for unity 8 and only then could you launch them in unity 8 and I also imagine that this user interface was more optimized for say um, touchscreen devices and such. And again, this UI was in beta, so you can't really say too much about the UI at this current moment in time, but it is what it is. But you can see there's rotation locks, so that's definitely something from Ubuntu for phones and tablets and such. And um, got rubber band scrolling there, and uh, as you can see, Dell Precision T3600 hasn't been updated because of course probably doesn't have any updates so on and so forth and of course you can change the background although um, it's designed for a portrait orientation display and uh, you can go ahead and set a wallpaper like that and there you go of course you still get access to the terminal because this is Linux after all need some authentication I can provide that So as you can see, we have our terminal here. And interestingly, there's a settings thing for the terminal, as well as a tabs section for the terminal, which is very interesting. And minimizing the window puts it off to the side here, and there's all of your scopes. Not a lot going on. It's a very limited user interface, but in the scheme of things, it is functional in nature. You also have some more options over here for network and sound and so on and so forth. But that's about all we're going to be able to demonstrate in Unity 8. So I'm going to log out and we will return back to the VM in screen recording. Yeah, it was a pretty early development stage for Unity 8, but I think they had something going for it. It was sort of like the hybrid interface that we saw like Windows 8, but with the conventional desktop in mind something like that because you noticed how in the applications they were in like a portrait mode orientation designed for a, a smartphone or a tablet or something of that nature the interface just reminds you of that it's pretty interesting if i if i say so myself but i don't think they stuck with it because as you'll soon see in a future release they switched entire environments to go to a completely different one and i will save the surprise as to what environment that used or what the environment the Ubuntu development team uses until that release comes out. My apologies on the crappy English. It's obviously pretty late at night. I should probably quit making these videos. So with that having been said, I'm going to go ahead and shut down the virtual machine and wrap up this video. So appreciate you all watching. If you like this video, I know it wasn't exactly too terribly exciting, but if you did like it nonetheless, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos just like this one, and or diverse content from this please subscribe as always and i will see you all in the next video have a good one mm -hmm.